Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We've got some more new model teases to talk about, most of them coming from the workbench of Brian Jones 104. Who does he work for? Well, Megadeth. So here we're seeing what looks like the very beginning stages of a Dave Mustaine signature Les Paul. Man, Dave is just getting so many signature guitars. I personally feel they're they're overdoing it for the market that's there, but it is cool to see what we're coming up with here. So first off here, it's a jet black finish with a nice stark white binding around it. That's pretty classy. We have no pick guard and it's witch hat knobs, very similar to what we've seen on some of his signature flying Vs, and it's all blacked out hardware. You've got the uncovered pickups, same set that we've seen and everything else and then we've got the ebony fretboard with his signature style inlays that he likes okay so it's just a completely blacked out les paul now i'm assuming these les pauls will be somewhere around three thousand two hundred dollars when they eventually get released you know rivaling like a slash les paul standard because this is looking gibson usa 100 not custom shop that doesn't necessarily scream dave or megadeth well except for the inlays if you associate him with that now I kind of like it because besides just being cosmetically different, it's also got the whole 24 fret thing going on. Now, I'm not going to say you never find Les Pauls with 24 frets, but within the strict Gibson lineup, there are very few to choose from. So if you need a more readily available 24 fret one that's a little bit cheaper, check out the Epiphone Prophecy series. They're 900 bucks brand new, but they've got a very similar thing going on here. But you could also check out one of the older Epiphone Prophecies. What makes these really cool in my opinion is you get the custom inlay work, the whole 24 frets, but this model, some of them anyways, not all, came stock with Gibson Dirty Fingers pickups. Now those pickups are worth like 300 bucks of the price. So if Fishman Fluences aren't your style, maybe check out one of the older ones. Now this is only one photo though. What would make me really impressed is if this had the modern heel carve on the back, or maybe even something more access-like. I guess while we're at it, we might as well throw a maple neck on it with a volute, but only time will tell for the rest of the spec. All right, here's another one that Brian leaked for us. And I use that term very, very loosely. Obviously, he doesn't want to lose his job. He's not going to be posting these if he wasn't allowed to. This is generated hype that they want us to talk about. However, it reminded me of the first time we saw the Dave Mist custom shops that we just reviewed, they looked very different. It didn't have the binding on the headstock. We had the split parallelogram inlays. I had completely forgotten about how pumped up and excited I was for those inlays just to be given what we ended up having right here. So it looks like maybe this was an early prototype, but then they decided to change some things up. They've added the binding to the headstock. They nailed that down, but they're like, you know what? I think we did the body better over here. Let's not all bling it all out. And I've got to agree with them. This looks a bit too gaudy and weird. This definitely looks mustained. And I guess now that I can look at the inlays side by side, it's probably better they went with the more signature one, but it's a shame the black one couldn't have had something special going for it like the flame top that we reviewed in this episode it had the flame top going for it this still had the maple top but maybe if we could have had the different inlays then that would have inspired collectors to want one of each even more so but that also means there's a unique dave mustaine custom shop prototype out there you know that's going to be collectible one day but then if you go further down the line you see like a completely chrome covered one so it's like the final model was just a blending of all this it's kind of cool to see the actual prototype stages and then eventually we see the limited edition green one that was usa that sold out instantaneously and his acoustic that i haven't heard a lot of people talk too much about but that's not why this photo is interesting Look what we've got here. It looks like it's the Epiphones and the Kramers that we're kind of just waiting for. I think this is where Gibson is going to sell volumes of these things, depending on how they're priced. So let's talk the Epiphones. According to Brian, these are going to be part of the Prophecy series. So we just talked about those, but you're going to see here, it does not have his signature Seymour Duncan pickups. It's the Fishman Fluences. So that instantly makes this guitar a little bit more desirable in my opinion, because it's different than all the other guitars that I've already reviewed. And I like this. We have the return of the maple top. It's the Epiphone version of the Gibson Custom Shop rather than the Gibson USA. Although it looks like our layout is just a tad bit different, but we still have our output jack on the side. They've even brought back the bound headstock. That's nice. And from this photo, it looks like the whole thing is just going to be a satin finish. So that'll make it a little bit different, including the back. Now the angle's hitting this in a way that makes me think they've sculpted the body in just a tad right there to make it easier to play in the higher registers. 
It does have a volute, as well as our Mustang guy here. And then probably the most controversial thing here is the switching back to dots. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that at this time, because I kind of like that it has something different, although dots, I, I don't know if that was the right decision. I think like some small block inlays would have looked pretty cool too, but I'm digging this whole red bloodburst color type thing going on. And wow, it says it has locking Grover stock. If I had to guess how much this would be, I'm thinking about $12.99. But just as with the custom shop one, we had a flame top, and then we had a black, but oh. <laughs> this is what the Gibson custom shop should have been. Come on, guys. It's a beautiful metallic black finish. This one string through instead of stop bar tailpiece which once again gives it something unique over the flank top version. However, this does not appear to be part of the Prophecy series, so it's a full-on gloss. So maybe it's not quite fair to compare those two guitars together. But this one has his signature pickup set with the Seymour Duncans. It looks like it's got the exact layout as the other ones. This is probably more accurately described as the Epiphone version of the custom shop we just saw. But that graphite metallic finish is looking great. This has the multi-bound headstock. Appears to have an ebony fretboard. Still has the volute, all that good stuff. That's one seriously sweet Epiphone. I'm curious which one is going to end up being more expensive. But to be truthful here, I thought for sure we would just skip the whole Epiphone thing and we would really hammer out the Kramers with Mustaine. But no, we're, we're getting Kramers and Epiphones and Gibson USAs and Gibson Custom Shops. And they're all very similar guitars. Except for the Kramers took the Gibson USA Limited Edition finish and made it readily available. Now that's a smart move. However, the Kramers are a lot more pointy on the V side. And now that I'm so used to the rounded off design of the other ones, it's kind of jarring. I mean, the whole body shape is just a little bit different but these are going to be string through once again looks like it's got a signature set of pickups so these are probably going to be what 899 range would be my guess and they're going to price the epiphones around like that 12 to 13 like we were talking about those are just educated guesses i, I could be completely wrong on that but i'd say the headstock looks okay even if it is unbound and hey, we've even got volutes over here. And if slime lime green is not your style, it looks like we're also going to have a jet black gloss. Although all the specs uh, appear to be pretty similar here. And apparently there's even more that they're not showing us. So I'm curious of your guys' thoughts here. Do you think Gibson has oversaturated the Dave Mustaine market here? I can see the cheaper iterations selling a lot more and people being a lot happier with them. Because let's face it, most of his Gibson products have been met with a lot of backlash and criticism. Doesn't mean they're bad guitars, it just means for the price point, a lot of people felt they weren't worth it. For me, I didn't really like the USAs that much. The custom shops I really liked, and I thought they were fairly priced for being a unique flying V within Gibson's catalog, but they didn't really seem to sell all that well or fast. But we've got some more to talk about. So we looked at this photo last time. We talked about the Dave Mustaine Explorers, in case you missed it. So yeah, Les Paul, Explorer. I mean, I really hope they're spacing these out like a couple of years. But if you zoom all the way back here, this flying V that I initially said was probably nothing is apparently going to be a Kirk Hammett signature guitar. And I suppose the big giveaway could have been this giant truss rod cover on here. They're really going for accurate 70s specs. So that's good to know that Greeny is not the only signature that we'll be seeing from Kirk Hammett. But whether it's a custom shop or USA release, I guess we'll just have to find out. Probably USA. Considering Gibson already has a black 70s V, it'd be pretty easy just to modify those and create a new model. There was already a custom shop Kirk Hammett flying V a couple of years back. Now to round out our episode tonight, I got a couple other interesting ones I found on Reverb. So first, this is a truly archaic guitar from the year 2. 102, a Gibson custom shop made to measure 58 Les Paul Jr. DC. But what caught my attention is Silver Fox finish. In my opinion, a good Silver Fox finish is green, and it's got all the wood grain, they're beautiful. However, I'll be honest, I don't know what these things look like brand new. Did it start a very dark color and then the yellowing of the lacquer is what gives it the greenish hue? I'm not sure, but it seems whenever Gibson actually uses this finish lately, it's always just black. Now this one, when I've zoomed in here a little bit, it's got a little bit of a green hint to it, but it's such a cool TV style finish here. This one being a double cut junior, you're either going to love it or hate it, but it's got a little bit of an aging job to it. Looks like our serial number makes it a 2022. And yeah, it's got all the aging. It always just reminds me of the Dave Hinson signature of the collector's choice models whenever I see an aged black double cut junior. 
Now that one's a little bit pricey at 5000 There's definitely better deals on Custom Shop Double Cut Juniors. You're paying about a $15 to $2,000 premium just for that cool finish. Next up, we had a Les Paul Modern Standard in trans purple. I've seen these from time to time, but it was one of the more interesting ones that popped up today. So it's got a pretty nice flame top. You don't necessarily see this whole trans purple finish too often, but the natural back and sides really complement this top, especially these ampered over knobs because they match the sides as well. And finding this thing about five years old and nearly unplayed could be a dream come true for somebody. And you've got some really interesting specs back here. So at first, I didn't even realize this has the apex head carve, you know, the whole rhino horn. I just thought that was like dancing figuring within the mahogany, but no. That's what makes the modern Les Paul standard interesting. I don't think Gibson makes this model anymore. I could be wrong, and I'm sure you could custom order it, but I certainly have not seen that in a while. But they had all these specs, including Burst Bucker 2 and 3 pickups. And wow, you could find some really cool finishes here. But oh, it was a limited edition of 100. But that doesn't say 100 of each, or is it split up between... And then lastly, a beautiful 57 reissue custom. These 2000s era customs are nice. Pretty much the only thing you have to worry about on these guys is they're very prone to developing neck humps around this area right here. So you've always got to check that because if you've got a hump there, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You can file the frets and or take the frets out, file the fretboard flat. I mean, what I'm saying is there's ways to fix it. I'm definitely not the best guy to advise on that. But these can be a good value for the money and you can find really nice finishes like normally a b7 custom is straight up ebony but this one is a clear natural and it's also aged on top of that a little bit additionally so you can see the unique spec of a 57 custom the mahogany top instead of maple i've always thought these were nice guitars and i've owned a few of them i mean this one's got some cool ringage back here too 68 customs from this era are also a good buy typically all right troglodytes i hope you enjoyed tonight's episode don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one Take care.